Again, thank you very much for joining our e-commerce digital marketing and freelancing class. And this is our first session in the e-commerce and digital marketing mentoring program for MSMEs. So I'm so normally if you want to do e-commerce online uh, or you want to venture into business, the typical setup is that you establish a physical store, and then that is where you post your products online. Like in this case, or that's where you post your products or display your products or wares online. Like in the case of uh, Subida Souvenirs, which is a shop in Dumaguete, they invite visitors to come to their shop in Dumaguete and uh, tourists to shop for their products, which are lo usually uh, locally made souvenirs, locally made toys that people can take advantage of and can enjoy no? and, uh, and take it home with them as they leave Dumaguete. However, uh, in, in the in the real world, if you in the real world, especially when you start embracing e-commerce, uh, there are many things that you can do online. No? You can promote your services. You can sell on retail, meaning focusing on selling specific products, or you can sell a membership or subscription. So let me give you some samples. So, for example, in the case of uh, Subida Souvenirs, which started as a physical store in Dumaguete City. Uh, last year, they released their website during the e-commerce and digital marketing mentoring program for MSME class in Cebu. So in this situation, uh, they created their website. They started selling the backpacks, the, the toy guns, or yung bamboo gun, and all related uh, locally made handicrafts supporting uh, local creators or local makers of products. And because of this initiative, it allowed them to make their products known. They got invited to different trade shows uh, initiated by the government. They also, I think they also started participating in international trade shows and they also got inquiries for resellership of their uh, products. No? And uh, according to its owner, uh, si Mike, sabi nga niya, may advantage din yung hindi ka nakalagay sa mga marketplaces. Yung nakalagay yung produkto mo sa sarili mong website, pinopromote mo yung brand mo, it makes people come to you and really appreciate all the products that you have and you don't compare to others. Now, typically, if you are in a marketplace, you have, there's this tendency of you being compared with all the products and services out there. But if you have it on your own site, then it gives uh, further value dun sa mga products na na binibenta mo sa website mo. Um, another example is brokerspaces.com, which is one of our students uh, in the Certified E-Commerce Specialist, Entrepreneur, and Professional Program. Yung marketplace project niya is brokerspaces, but instead of having a marketplace where all of the properties can be found online, what they did instead is they created a, a plug-in where if you are a member, uh, you can install this plug-in on your website and in the process, allowing all the listings to appear on your website. So this is a different way of doing it because typically if you are a real estate broker, you normally join platforms to publish your listing. But in this case, you maintain your site, you have your listing by adding the broker spaces plugin. You also allow the listing of other brokers who allow their listings to be shared, to be displayed on your site and allowing collaboration opportunities among real estate uh, brokers. And when I started uh, venturing into e-commerce online back in uh, 1995, I was really more into services selling. But in 1999, uh, I started uh, working on my first book, and it was published in the year 2000. All of my all of my works are self-published, so I use my blog digitalfilipino.com to release my books. No, from the e-commerce guide for the e-Filipino, then I also release stats report. Then in 2004, I released the e-commerce workshop and the Philippine Internet Review or 10 years of uh, Philippine Internet history. And all of these were uh, published or uh, promoted on our website. And I remember accepting payments through CC Now, later on through Ecobo because this was this was in ano eh, 2000, year 2000 and 2002, then 2004. And then in 2008, uh, we the, that was the time when we released our last uh, book, no? So last book so far, which was uh, blogging from home. But what what the changes that happened in two thousand eight, I guess, hindi na pwedeng may book ka lang. Kailangan meron ka ng accompanying uh, learning videos 
o kaya kailangan may kasama na siyang course. So at that time, uh, when the book came out, we also had this video series that you can search for online. It's on Vimeo. It's on uh, uh, YouTube. No? Our video series complementing blogging from home. And eventually, this book paved the way for the course, which was the Certified Blog and Social Media Entrepreneur Program, which is still ongoing uh, today. So, so nakikita nyo na yung sample na pinakita ko, no, yung retail. So, yung retail can, or e-commerce via retail, or e-commerce via subscription, talaga nag-iiba na siya. Hindi yung parang from physical store, benta ko online, uh, from a service na ginagawa mo traditionally, like yung pagbebenta ng real estate, pinopromote mo lang. Ngayon, may mga collaborative tools na that you can avail of. And, nag-level up din ang expectation ng mga tao, especially when it comes to information or knowledge products like books, demanding kailangan may video na, among others. Now, another example here, like, for example, for people like me, we get invited to a lot of events, no? Uh, to speak, or for seminars where we share our insights. Uh, and this is usually done face-to-face. -face. But but nowadays, you don't have to wait for an event for an event para makapag-share ka lang ng knowledge mo. Hindi mo kailangang hintayin may mag-invite sa yung speaker para para makapag-speak ka lang o para magkaroon ka ng extra income. Nowadays, because of e-commerce, you can market your expertise. Like for example, I'm doing this webinar right now. Uh, we we have webinar series in the certified e-commerce professional program. So and we have enrollees there, no? So Ito yung way, new ways na of uh, offering uh, services. So you can you can look at the enrollment system like a subscription program. Although one way of looking at it, you can also look at it from a retail dahil pinapurchase mo yung course or pwede rin siyang parang guru model kasi minamarket mo yung expertise mo online. And all of this made possible uh, because of more and more people embracing e-commerce no? as a way of doing business. So the good thing about e-commerce, especially if you will venture into it, whether you want to market your expertise, you want to sell products on retail, or you want to offer services, is that it gives you the opportunity to build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your borderless target customer. Uh, you can, all of a sudden, you realize you have clients from abroad. Sa mga online courses ko, naranasan ko na magkaroon ako ng student from Ghana. Um, meron din akong mga students from the U.S. So, so, unlike before, may customer ka lang kung saan ka pumunta o kung saan ka lang ma-invite. Now, you, you can be at the comfort of your own home and uh, doing all of these type of business transactions online. Okay? So, when you want to consider e-commerce, there are many things that you need to consider. But I think the number one thing that you have to consider is your audience. Sino ba yung market na gusto mong iserve? Uh, when you're new, and depending on your business model, maybe you want to serve the entire market that is available out there. But in my case, uh, medyo iba yung focus ko when I do marketing nowadays. I focus on my network. Mas organic ako, mas nakafocus ako sa mga connections ko. Kasi I realize whenever I do more broad external marketing out there, I realize that still, in reality, majority of people who do business with me are in my uh, network or people that I know or people in my sphere of, uh, in my community or in my sphere of influence. So, it's important na malinaw sa'yo yung target audience mo. Um, at pag malinaw yun, mas, mas, mas strategic, mas planado kung paano ka nag reach out to them, mas, mas pili rin kung ano yung mga services na iyo offer mo. Kasi supposedly, mas kiala mo yung target audience mo, mas alam mo kung ano yung pangangailangan nila. And, Pag nag-venture ka to into e-commerce, kailangan din open-minded ka pagdating sa business model mo. Hindi yun MLM, ha? <laughs> pag sinabi kong open-minded ka pagdating sa business model mo, how you do it offline will not necessarily work online. For example, like in the case of Subida Souvenirs, offline model niya, meron siyang space, uh, may store siya, people go there to buy. Pagdating sa online, kailangan isipin niya na pwedeng yung products niya ay market niya abroad. 
yung, yung products niya might have to be priced higher as a result of that because there are more. There are additional costs na hindi niya na-consider that na hindi existing nung nasa physical store siya. Pero pagdating sa online, may mga other costs siya na dapat i-cover. Therefore, mag-iiba yung business model niya. Mag-iiba yung pricing niya among others. So, the same case also for service providers, no? At doon sa mga tao na go-offer ng kanilang skills o kanilang expert services. Another thing that you have to think about is um, paano mo bibigyan ng assurance yung target market mo na they can do business with you securely. Can they trust you? Will you protect their data? Hindi mo ba ibebenta yung data nila kung kanin-kanino? Hindi mo ba sila isa-spam? Hindi mo ba i-abuse yung kanilang information? Uh, malaking bagay yon kasi uh, data privacy is high on is high on the priority list nowadays so if you want to thrive in this business then data privacy is a is a concern and a must that must that needs to be addressed and that people need to be assured na you value that more than you value that no mahalaga maramdaman ng customer na malaki yung pagpapahalaga mo na maprotektahan yung information nila and that is why you also get picky on where you do your business. You choose platforms that also has that same value as you or that values the same thing as you. Alimbawa, binabadyo mo yung data privacy pero nung mag-join ka sa isang platform, eh, yung platform pala ay kukopyahin niya yung data mo kapos i-abuse niya yung data mo. So, hindi rin maganda yon. Kaya, kailangan namimili ka rin kung saan ka nakikipag-trade at do business with people na align yung values nyo, align yung mga bagay na pinapahalagaan nyo. So, although e-commerce is pretty much digital, but back-end, relationships, how you do business, alignment of values, alignment of principles are very important pa rin. No? Now, of course, uh, putting up your back-end, trying to identifying products or services that you can sell online, generate income from it, address a customer need uh, are important no, as a foundation. But sooner or later, once you've established that, you will need to start promoting your products and services online. And that is where marketing can come in. Um, in the old days, or although a lot of us are still seeing this, the typical way of marketing is, yeah, we have billboards, sometimes we... Uh, publish uh, newspaper ads and uh, do flyers among others and I guess it's still working kasi marami naman talaga on the ground and usually ideally marketing is a combination of both online and offline efforts but of course uh, when it comes to digital especially if you have limited budget yung gagasusin mo na 2,000 pesos para makapag-create ng flyer at makapag-mass produce and paying someone uh, to hand it out for you, uh, the same amount you can spend and run advertising online and get people to go to your Facebook page or go to your website and do transactions with you. So, so ibig sabihin, pagdating sa digital, parang nag-iiba yung priority mo. Mag-iiba yung paano ko ba gagasusin yan. No? So, siguro depende. Kapag branding ang focus mo, billboards might make sense kasi gusto mo lagi ka nakikita. Pero kapag transactions ang hinahabol mo, then maybe you want to be more pointed or more focused on what you want to push to your target market um, na ang intention ay mag-click sila at i-complete yung action na gusto mong gawin nila. Which, if it's making them buy online, then mas focus para bumili sila uh, online. Um, I remember, nung, when I started venturing into uh, freelancing, uh, I, I had a full-time job then, and uh, and uh, I resigned from my full-time job, and then I got invited, uh, before I resigned, I got invited to be a speaker sa Connect World. And uh, after that talk, an editor of, the editor of PC World approached me and said if I want to write an article about my topic, which was at that time, checklist for setting up email on your local area network. Kasi uso noon mga CC mail, Lotus Notes, Microsoft Outlook Exchange Server, yung mga ganun-ganun, yung mga Outlook Exchange Server, among other things. Um, so, I agreed, no? And then, but when I was writing my article, sabi ko, I cannot just write this article for the sake of writing this article. I have to have a clearer objective. And my objective then was, ah, 
Magsusulat ako ng article, pero ang intention ko, dapat, pag may nagbasa ng article na to, ang may isip niya, kukunin niya akong consultant. Kasi noon, big deal pag consultant ka eh. I remember even asking Bill Torres, who is considered the father of the Philippine Internet, uh, a question kung paano ba maging IT consultant. At ang, ang advice niya sa akin noon, simple lang, magbasa ka lang na magbasa. At that time, it didn't make sense to me, but I realized later on, Um, that, that that was really it. No? Pag, pag mas marami kang alam at nasishare mo yung alam mo, people pay you because, you know, mas, mas may time ka to study these things than them kasi mas busy sila doon sa mga regular mode of business nila. And so it did, that happened. And then I, that's when, that's the time I realized na content development, content writing, content marketing uh, is the way to go when it comes to marketing yourself or parang parang basic anchor siya for marketing. And that is the reason why we do a lot of these learning series online. Uh, two years ago, we had this uh, 42 free e-commerce and digital marketing learning modules that people can access for free. Last year, we updated it. And now, we're kicking off another series. Uh, and you're participating in this series right now as part of our uh, marketing efforts or digital marketing efforts. So there are many ways that you can market yourself online. Typically, you can do it through ads na you just shout na, hi, bilin mo ko, nagbebenta ko, bilin mo ko. Or you focus more on adding value and uh, making you an indispensable resource uh, for a person kahit na marami pa siyang resources na pwedeng makuha out there, at least isali ka niya dun sa listahan niya. And more or less, that will keep you uh, afloat or keep you in, or it will will keep you in mind of that person kasi alam niya na you you're one of the few na nag add ng value uh, sa kanya no kaya pagdating sa digital and you want to explore digital marketing as a means to reach out to your target market uh, i i usually focus on four things number one is search visibility kailangan pag ginugol ka o yung subject matter na passionate ka pag ginugal siya, kailangan nakikita yung content mo online. I think that's the basic premise, no? Second, um, present ka on social media, pero wag naman yung parang spammer. Kailangan present ka in social media, hindi lang in terms of, uh, at least I, on my end, dahil di naman ako komedyante, <laughs> hindi ako more on the entertainment value, no? I'm, I'm using more social media to add value by sharing content. No? Although medyo ibang ibang kategory siya, mas limited yung market, pero yun na nga yung sinasabi ko kanina eh, you don't have to please everyone. It's not about uh, quantity. It's a, it's all about the quality of your market. I'd rather have, I I might post it on social media, pero actually I only need to get two, three, five strategic people to notice it para yung content ko mas may value sa kanya at mas malayo pa yung mararating ng content ko at at ano yung benefit na mabibigay nung sa akin and then of course there's content marketing uh, you can only be visible on search you can only be relevant on social media if you have good content so at, and if you have good content how you introduce your good content to other people also matters kasi kung hindi mo siya ma-introduce na maayos kahit anong ganda niya hindi siya papansinin and last but not the least is yung relationship management um, I'm guilty of this one I think if I pwede ko sabihin na inuna ko yung content marketing when I was starting I'm still doing that right now naging number 2 ko noon search visibility number 3 ko social media ang pinaka catch up ko right now I'm still working hard to catch up is relationship management Kasi I always tell people, no, I have like maybe around 20,000 connections on social media from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, considering overlap. So let me assume na 20,000 siya. Pero in reality, you will only get in touch with 200 people a year and maybe have quality conversation with around 50 people a year. So there's a lot of people na hindi mo talaga nakaka-touch base. Kaya... Hindi na ako nagpo-focus ngayon din sa masyadong uh, wide and vast na style of marketing na you're trying to hit a million people, you're trying to hit a hundred thousand people. Hindi ko na iniisip yun eh. Kung yung 20,000 pala na nasa network ko, hindi ko na, na 
na fully maximize o hindi ko nakaka-keep in touch with. Bakit pa ako magdadagdag, no? So, hindi pa ako ready magdagdag. So, ngayon, mas doon ako nagpo-focus. And that's what I've been focusing on for the past two years. And personally, I feel I made the right decision. Kasi yung, by focusing on that, I got more as a result. So, yung approach will also depend on you, on what will work best for you. But of course, relationship management only works if you will come up with content, uh, whether on your side, through social media, posting on search, that will be valuable to your relationship or, or for the people that you have a relationship with or for the people in your network. And that is why it is important to be observant as well in that regard. So my premise for digital marketing, everything that you do to promote your products and services online, if done right, should connect you to the 20% who will give 80% of your desired revenue. Um, kasi minsan, we try to focus at bulk. We try to focus on uh, the remaining, the other percentage na mukhang malaki pero maliit yung nakukuha mo. No? So I would suggest that you, you really define your audience. You look at your network. You look at your community. You look at your connections. You look at what content that matters to them. You look what content that you have or what you can produce that would matter to them. Um, pakita mo rin siyempre na nag-grow ka para pumasok ka ron dun sa, para yung relationship mo dun sa 20% who will give 80% of your desired revenue will be strengthened. I hope I'm making sense there. All right. So, ano yung mga dapat natin pag-isipan pag sinabi natin, okay, importante sa atin ang digital marketing. Ano-ano ba yung mga components dyan? Uh, of course, uh, para sa akin, pinakauna, blogging. Content. And normally, content is generated through blogging or article writing, depending on how you want to refer to it. So, nung time ko, very unemotional ang pagsusulat. We don't really write from first person. We're trying to write things from a factual basis. But nowadays, because... Ang culture daw ngayon, mas nagiging storytelling na. So, nag-iiba na yung style ng pagsusulat. Mas first-hand na. At saka, at the same time, you always provide contrast. no You show what how things were and how things are changing. So, ganun din siya. Kaya, when people ask me, but hindi na ako nagpa-publish ng libro since 2008? It's hard. Kasi, by the time na may matapos akong bagong material, may bago na naman. And parang ultimo ko, pag natapos ko na yung manuscript ko, parang ko naisip, parang luma na siya. So, dahil may bago na naman developments out there. So, maybe later on, I will still think about it. Pero this is my observation as of this time of this space. Uh, of course, you want to publish content, high-value content, so that when people look for it online and search for it, they will find it online. And uh, if you were able to build your relationships, then you can email people about it and share it to them. Uh, and email is not limited to your traditional email. Email can now take place also in social media and engage people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And uh, if you have activities and you need a last push, especially if you're too busy to do your engagement in the usual way, then you can also explore advertising. So all of this, parang ito yung mga basic na at least importante pagdating sa digital marketing. Kaya nga misa, mahirap sabihin na you're a digital marketing expert. Kasi pag sinay mong expert ka, parang marami kang alam in this space. Pero in reality, a lot of digital marketing practitioners uh, focuses on certain areas. Kasi lahat sila may kanya-kanyang uh, methods, although they are interrelated. Pero pag nag-focus ka kasi sa isa, mas marami ka pang pwedeng gawin sa kanya. So, depende siguro kung ano yung need na meron ka na dapat mong i-address. But if you're starting uh, blogging and social media, search is very important, uh, and then social media. Kasi pag nag-focus ka sa social media, um, sa experience ko, like the traffic that we get on our website, 70% uh, of our traffic still comes from search. Kaya malaking bagay talaga yung pagiging visible, although it's quiet, walang ganong fanfare. Unlike in social media, you can make a lot of fanfare out of it, especially for people who are obsessed with likes and comments. 
Pero kahit anong dami ng fanfare mo sa social media, pag sinerch ka, hindi ka nakita. Parang baliwala rin. Kaya kailangan medyo mas grounded ka, mas realistic ka on these things at you don't get carried away sa mga likes and comments mo. No? Okay. So I hope I'm able to give uh, more or less um, ample description ng e-commerce and digital marketing since this is only a, a one-hour topic. Another thing that I would like to refer today is um, yung how things are changing. Uh, although alam naman natin na maraming traffic ngayon, uh, maraming work opportunities out there, so it's more crowded now than usual. Uh, traveling is has been more difficult as well, uh, whether on air, on the road, or via sea. No, but ma, ma, iba na, iba na. Kaya nga. Kaya nga nagbabago na yung gusto ng tao ngayon, nagbabago na yung trend. And one of the trends that we're seeing right now is a lot of people wanting to work from home. And actually, I'm one of them. No? I could say that I work from home and I enjoy my time at home um, and do other stuff. So, and I think for a lot of you here today, these are some, some of the things that you are considering or thinking of, whether in the future you can really work from home. Um, and in fact, even offices right now are also embracing shorter working hours or I mean, I mean shorter days uh, or shorter number of days in a week to work so that you can also spend it at home instead and carry out your work there. Um, in my case, nung nag-decide ako mag-work from home, di ba marami ako nakwento kanina na ako ano nung ginagawa ko. So, uh, ngayon, uh, I work from home by, and what I what I do mostly is I create content for our patrons. And then uh, from time to time, I teach last year uh, and do assessments. So last year, I spent most of my time in the Rural Impact Sourcing Technical Training of the Department of ICT. And I also got the chance to handle three classes in the e-commerce and digital marketing mentoring program for MSME. Yung talagang pinaka-freelance ko sa kanya, although low, light, although low profile ngayon, is I'm doing cryptocurrency trading for clients. So currently, I have clients na minamanage ko yung accounts nila. Kapos ako yung nagki-cryptocurrency uh, trading for them pagdating sa mga uh, platforms. no uh, Doing mining, lending, uh, among others. So usually, yung freelancing business, tahimik siya eh. Uh, yung, kung hindi mo kwento, people would hardly know that you are doing it. Pero the, the point there is, maraming opportunities kang pwede makita online. In, hindi necessarily you have to follow what is typical. You have to look into your areas of strength and you can also explore new opportunities na pwede mong pasukan at pwede kang kumuha ng work na pwede mong gawin uh, sa bahay mo. No? And depending on the arrangement. But I think what I would like to emphasize here is that pagdating sa freelancing, actually freelancing is a doorway to self-discovery. Kasi makikita mo yung strengths mo, makikita mo yung weakness mo, makikita mo if you lack discipline, ayaw mo palang nakakagalitan ka, ayaw mo pinafollow up ka, ayaw mo pinipressure ka, ayaw mo tinatawagan ka pala ng weekends, ayaw mo palang tinatawagan ka ng gabi. O kaya makikita mo naman na, Adik ka pala dyan, no? Yung parang tipong pag may ginawa kang project, hindi ka natutulog kasi gusto mo palang ginagawa siya. Pardon the word, adik, no? Biro-biroan nyo sa mga freelancer pag yung mga hindi natutulog. Usually, uh, misan yun ang tinatawag sa kanila. Uh, and then, nandun din yung nag enjoy ka nag-research. Kahit hindi mo alam, pinag-aaralan mo kasi gusto mo ma-please yung client mo. So, when you venture into freelancing, it really makes you aware. Makikita mo rin yung mga bad traits mo no lalo na kung masyado kang ma-pride makikita mo rin yon na hindi ka pala para doon kasi ano ka medyo mayabang ka pala ayaw mo inuutusan ka ayaw mo yung client na susunod gusto mo ikaw na susunod so marami kang malalaman sa sarili mo when you venture into freelancing but we can with a growth mindset of course you can capitalize and build on your strengths um doon mo rin makikita na marunong ako ng ganito baka kailangan mo ng tulong so you can we can Look at you can look at your skills. You can keep on improving your skills, boosting your skills. At uh, sooner or later, uh, people will also take advantage of them para magamit nila sa business nila. Uh, like in our case, uh, if you notice, we have a lot of content on our website. Hindi naman siya dahil i-research lang siya na i-research. Misang 
dahil nagtatrust na yung client sa iyo, gusto niya ikaw na rin ang gagawa nun para sa kanya, kaya sabihin niya sa iyo. Pag-aralan mo naman yan, no, para sa iyo ko nalang papagawa yan, ayaw ko na ipagawa yan sa iba. May mga clients na ganun mag-isip. Kaya sa freelancing, uh, malaking factor pa rin ang relationship para mag ka sa business na to. So at this point, I'd like to show I'd like to show some sites of uh, some of the freelancers that I know, particularly those that I got the chance to work with sa uh, Rural Impact Sourcing Technical Training na uh, one way or the other na top ko sila as trainers. Like for example, Marjo Naldo, who used to work for who used to have a BPO business, uh, ventured into uh, e-commerce and now owns uh, shoplocal.ph. I'm showing this to you para makita nyo na pag naging freelancer ka, you don't necessarily get stuck na parang, ah, pag freelancer ko, yun na lang gagawin ko, kukuha lang ako ng trabaho online. Actually, pag freelancer ka, you can evolve to being more than just a freelancer. So, like Marl, who is more into BPO before, biglang all of a sudden may e-commerce business siya, and he has shoplocal.ph, he is based in uh, Cagayan de Oro, Jun Barangan from Cebu, uh, is a search engine uh, marketing specialist. Uh, Nag-start siya in that field as a freelancer, uh, trying to get online jobs and helping people with their search engine presence and marketing their products and services through uh, search engine advertising. And now he has a business called uh, Cebu Digital Hub and conducts uh, training online. Actually, yung Google certification ko, yung Google Analytics, AdWords search, mobile, display, video, shopping. Uh, sa kanya ko nakuha lahat. No? Kasi sa kanya ako nag-aral and then uh, through through his teachings, I was to, able to get my certification on uh, Google Analytics and all the Google AdWords na modules. Um, Jay Balan from Cavite, uh, he's also a, a freelancer who used to get, who, who gets uh, jobs online and he still serves clients online, parang si June. Yung mga kliyente ni June, taga-abroad taga din yung mga minamanage niyang Google AdWords na accounts. So si Jay then he gets uh, freelancing projects that he does online. And he also owns a company called uh, Ripple Trend, uh, catering naman to the local market in, in, in so far as their digital marketing uh, requirements. Uh, from Cebu, uh, one of my former students, uh, certified blog and social media entrepreneur program was Flair Castro. Um, nung matapos niya yung program, at that time freelancer siya, pero na-realize niya, nakakapagod din yung parang palagi ka lang serve sa international market. Uh, she has a very active uh, Upwork profile, no? And later on, she decided to put up her own company called 30 Media. I think sa ano sila eh? Uh, hindi maktan eh. Uh, the other side. Basta, dun sila. And uh, getting uh, clients also locally. So they're managing a lot of uh, Cebu-based clients uh, in the real estate, among others, and promoting their brands uh, online. Uh, I also got a chance to meet uh, Piper from Buanga. Piper is from uh, Davao City. So si Piper naman, uh, freelancer din siya. And then later on, nag decide siya to create uh, nights of online marketers and training people on how to become freelancers. So she still gets a lot of freelancing opportunities. But however, rather than keeping it uh, sa kanya, binibigay na niya dun sa mga natitrain yung tao. At ngayon, very active siya in doing advocacy and teaching people how to do freelancing as well. From Davao, I also met uh, Gilmar Padua of Infinity Hub, who started as a freelancer also. And then uh, later on, I decide siya na put up ng Infinity Hub. And uh, later on, uh, yun na, yun ang ginagawa niya. So mga clients niya, mga celebrities, mga speakers, and then managing their online presence. And uh, may mga nakater din siya mga network marketing companies and helping them with their digital presence. From Davao also, uh, na-meet ko rin si blogger Carla Singson for so many years now. And then uh, right now, when you get the chance to see Carla, she has uh, prep events. So usually she has clients from Manila na tinatap siya to promote their products and services in Davao and organize events for them to introduce them to the Davao market. But at the same time, uh, uh, Carla is also a copywriter, uh, a digital marketing specialist, and at uh, forte niya rin is brand positioning and brand tactics no? and copywriting. Okay, so 
doon mo makikita na pag freelancer ka, you don't necessarily get stuck to being a freelancer. It's up to you kung paano ka mag evolve Like in my case, nag-start ako as a freelance writer back in uh, 1995. And uh, kaya pag, pag natatanong ako today kung paano nag-start, sabi ko, I started as a freelance writer. No? So, kung tutusin, wag mo, kung ano man yung ginagawa mo ngayon o plano mong pasukin, huwag mong isipin na maliit lang siya. Kasi it can really pave the way for other things uh, as well. Now, if you are in business and you already have an existing business, like may transport service ka, may travel ka, or maybe you are a retailer online or maybe you have a restaurant uh, you can also take a, you can also look at what the big platforms are doing the service providers are doing what the freelancers are doing and you can look at their activities and see paano ko to pwedeng i-apply sa business ko para mas makapag-build ako ng relationship at ma-expand ko yung aking uh, business online uh, i also got the chance to work with Uh, Vanj Padilla from Pangasinan and also Jessica Madraso from Davao. Uh, they have their blog sites where they tell their stories. Pero at the same time, they are actually digital marketing practitioners. They do uh, freelance work. Um, although, pag sinabi naman natin freelance, hindi naman siya necessarily na yung freelance work mo galing sa Upwork or freelancer o ano lang, no? pwede naman di may freelance work ka ng clients mo local. Wala naman nagsasabi na kailangan pag freelance ka, uh, international lang ang clients mo. Your clients can be from anywhere. no? And uh, yeah, I think this is the last one. So here I'm sharing to you three more people. Like for example, uh, Sherlyn Fortunado, uh, who is a Facebook ads advertiser and a chatbot builder and getting clients through online sites like Upwork. Uh, I also have here uh, Apple Allison, who's currently based in Malaysia, pero kung tutusin, freelance writer siya. So actually, she's a blogger. And through her blogging, she got she was able to guest in international TV programs that eventually landed her a scholarship in Malaysia. And then she decided already to become more of an ASEAN blogger. So she travels, she blogs, and then she does a lot of content writing for clients and uh, consulting na yun din yung nakakatulong para ma-sustain niya yung kanyang lifestyle as an ASEAN blogger no and uh, in a sense parang ano siya ngayon no nomad <laughs> ang tawag ko sa kanya and then of course you have uh, Genesis Unico uh, who has a blog at onlinejobslifestyle.com uh, meron siyang onlinejobsuniversity.com that he uses as a platform to teach people on how to do uh, freelancing online pero at the same time to nagtuturo rin siya sa mga free aspiring uh, freelancers. So from a freelancer, naging educator siya at uh, ngayon nag, nag he now goes around the country as well educating people on how to become a freelancer and he's also the president of the Digital Career Advocates of the Philippines or DICA. And uh, ito, may last one pa pala ako. I also got the chance to meet uh, from Lanao del Norte, si Christine Ohagan of, Oha- of Ohagan Virtual Solutions. Na-feature sila dati yung kapatagan Lanao del Norte sa, sa TV about yung story ng mga farmers doon na tinuruan how to do uh, online jobs and then later on uh, use that as an opportunity to create employment and business opportunities for the locals. So Christine is one of them no? and she uses her Facebook online presence para makakuha rin ng clients at nag-disseminate siya ng projects sa mga teammates niya online. So yung pagpasok sa freelancing, kung sakaling yan ang gusto mong pat na puntahan also, whether mag-e-commerce ka o gusto mo mag-digital marketing ka. Kasi lahat naman yan, one way or another, are interrelated. When you market your services online as a freelancer, actually you're doing e-commerce. Pero ang focus mo is you're marketing your expertise. no? So karamihan, lalo na sa mga virtual assistant na still starting, kadalasan they venture into data entry type of projects. Yan yung nag research ka, in-encode mo, o kaya binibigyan ka ng isang makapal na libro na kailangan mo i-encode. Um, or transcription, which can be video or audio recordings, like webinars like this, kapos pinapatranscribe at ginagawa siyang article or transcript that is posted online. You can also do chat or 
chat customer support or uh, phone customer support to answer queries for clients or for inquiries or ikaw yung proactive na tumatawag to prospects. Others also do email and schedule management, lalo na yung mga taong walang time magbasa ng email nila. So, ang ginagawa lang nila is reply, delete, or archive. And they follow the rules that you set. And they can also fix your calendar, book your appointments, send you reminders, among others. Parang mga virtual, uh, parang virtual secretary. No? And then, of course, there are people who also do graphic design. Uh, whether simple or complicated, depende siguro sa requirements ng kliente. And of course, kapag nag-grow ka pa further, pwede ka maging specialized service provider. Although yung graphic design is actually specialized na rin siya, no? lalo na pag pumasok ka na sa area ng logo making at uh, branding design. Kasi po basic, wala ka pang ganong concern sa branding. Pero kapag may branding component na, specialized graphic design na yun, no? So, pag specialized na, you can venture into web development, content writing, search engine marketing, email marketing, and social media marketing. Activities that are usually performed in the digital marketing space or in the e-commerce space, but in this in this situation, instead of you coming up with your own business na, ayan, gagawa ka ng online store, ipopromote mo yung online store mo, pagdating sa freelancing, ikaw yung tumutulong sa mga entrepreneurs para ma-render tong service na to para sa kanila at tulungan sila na ipromote yung mga negosyo nila. So, it depends on the uh, scenario. Kaya ang suggestion ko uh, for those of you uh, who are participating in this webinar session, whether you are participating in this webinar session as a regular business na brick and mortar and you would like to uh, expand it online, it is important that you have to dream big na isipin mo ang client mo pwedeng nationwide, pwedeng maging global. You also need to set goals para hindi ka ma-overwhelm doon sa investment na gagawin mo. Kasi minsan, pag sinabi mo, oh, mag-invest ka sa website, gagasos ka ng 2,000, gagasos ka ng 5,000, gagasos ka ng 20,000 para sa marketing mo, you get overwhelmed kasi tingin mo kagad sa kanya mahal. Pero if you have bigger goals, you have bigger revenue goals, at nakikita mo that these investments are a must requirement for them to happen, then that investment will make sense. Kasi you cannot earn something na hindi ka nag invest also for it, no, to make them happen. And uh, the moment your big, your dream is clear, what are the goals that you will need to set para ma-achieve yung dream na yun, then you can start taking action and making them happen. So, ano yung mga components na dapat mong i-build? What are the actions that you need to take para ma-promote mo yung business mo? Who are the people that you need to hire, whether mag-hire ka ng freelancer uh, or full-time para tulungan ka para gawin siya? So, i-ano mo yan, planuhin mo siya lahat, no? Um, ganun din, if you are, if you already have a website, and for 2018, you want to have more sales, then you have to do more digital marketing, either on your own, or you hire someone who can help you to make them happen. So, in that situation, still, you have to dream big, set goals, and take action. And if you are aspiring to become a freelancer this year, and you are still starting, then focus on services na tingin mo pwede maging entry point mo, pero don't be contented there. You can keep on improving your skills. Take on projects kahit pro bono siya, whether for organizations, for your church, what have you, para meron ka mapagpraktisan at makapag-build ka ng portfolio mo. Kasi as a freelancer, having a portfolio is very important. And then keep on networking kasi a lot of clients hire a lot of them hire also for attitude and not just skills. Kung nakikita ang teachable ka, you're always present. Pag message ka, sumasagot ka. Mas nagiging preferred ka kasi may mga experts na magagaling pero pag pinem mo, sasagutin ka after 8 hours na o after 24 hours na. Misan napaka-importante rin yung availability at uh, eagerness ng person na ma-please yung client niya at pinapakita niya ang determined siya na makapag-serve well para sa kanyang client. Okay? So, thank you very much for joining this session. My apologies dun sa konting glitch na experience natin at the start of the session. So, after this webinar, we're going to upload it, including the handout. So, I hope to see you on Monday. Tama, Monday yan, no? Uh, we're gonna tackle branding for MSMEs and freelancers. And then, we will have more sessions to come. 
and all of these are meant to help you uh, venture into e-commerce and digital marketing and in the future sessions also marami ring hands on or mas magfo-focus tayo sa hands on para pwedeng niyo siyang i-follow and uh, do it yourself all right so thank you very much for joining this session um 